Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the Jodocast, your home for Star Wars gaming, and that includes Star Wars Unlimited, which we're here to talk about a very specific Star Wars Unlimited thing that was announced today at Spiel in Germany. Um, so, Fantasy Flight's at Spiel, like every other giant board game person in the world, at... We're not. We weren't at Spiel. One day, I'd love to go to Spiel. Yeah, I've been I to the convention think, center. That's where I went to Star Wars yeah. Celebration in 2013. I think it's kind of it's kind of like Gen Con, but more focused towards retailers and stuff rather uh, than fans. It's. I think it's a bit of both. But in any case, uh, Fantasy Flight was doing a thing announcing stuff revealed some cards what we're here to talk about today is they announced a uh for the next set set four jump to light speed a uh carbonite edition the ultimate premium pack for collectors basically a box labeled carbonite edition that is i guess what you would call a collector uh booster uh, what what is the uh, as our card game expert uh, correspondent? What is the uh, technical term that other card gamers might? Yeah, as? yeah. I think it generally you get called collector boosters. I mean, Magic kind of started this with their collectors boosters um, that they uh, released, and in fact, even the uh, the graphic design of these packages looks almost exactly like magic's uh collector booster boxes which i find i it's sort of kind of funny. i was surprised that you posted that picture i'm like oh it's like really identical with just like the yellow stripes as like the big kind yeah. of like hey this yeah. is what's different yeah basically the only difference is, is a star wars logo instead of a magic logo on it um, so but anyway so collector boosters um, yeah, there's Leo, still what, what is the collector packs. booster? Yeah. I don't know what this is. What yeah, does it, this mean to me, someone who's this is my first yeah. game ever? Before we get into that, we should say they did not give any details at Spiel Essen. Uh, basically, they just said this is a thing we're going to be making, um, but we don't really know uh, retail price, um, what's going to be in the packs. How many how many cards are in the packs? What kind of cards? None of that stuff. We got um, one image. Just yeah. a lot of speculation. The image, let me break down this image here. Got a little call out that says the ultimate premium pack for collectors. It's got the jump to light speed logo, which is very pretty. It's got I don't know if you noticed on the jump to light speed. It's got that rebel. I think you see it on Biggs and maybe Wedge. You see it on a lot of Rebel Pilot helmets that like circle with the lines through it. Mm-hmm. That's also just nicely bleeding into like a X wing. Anyway, uh, we got some the first art from set four, which is uh, Vader's Tie Advance, which is cool. I've, I mean, it was pretty clear by the name; it's going to be ship focused. But this thing uh, says twelve booster packs, so it's showing like a picture of the display case with the boosters in it. Yeah. So I think we can guess that if a full display is twelve, maybe it's the same cost as a regular display and like could, so would it be out of the realm of possibility that a single collector booster costs ten dollars and it's basically twice as much because a box you get half as much is it out of the realm of possibility no i think it's going to be quite a bit more expensive than that oh. so let's talk magic collector boosters um so do we have to <laughs> So if you buy just a standard um, pack of Magic cards, you're going to get, um, I think you are just guaranteed one foil. And I think there might be a s small chance for some other cards to be upgraded to foils. I honestly, I, I will say, I don't remember because Wizards changes this fairly often. Um, yeah. And they've even changed what kinds of boosters they have like they used to at one point have three kinds of boosters draft set and collectors and now they're down to just play and collectors boosters because three was okay. way too confusing for people 
but the collector is more likely to come with rare cards. Or so just yeah, with different yes, a collector cards, booster. Or... Yeah, collector booster is going to have more, uh, more car, more rare cards in it. Um, it size wise, in... yeah, size wise, they're the same. It's ba- it's the same number of cards as a regular booster, but you've got more. Uh, like a higher ratio of of rare cards there's less common cards in it all the commons oh. you're getting are going to be foils they're going to have um uh unique treatments of cards in those collectors boosters there's uh, special kinds of foiling that you won't get in regular boosters there's um sometimes there's uh uh unique art or unique card frames uh, that again, you're not going to get in your regular uh, play boosters. Sure. So if Unlimited was following more or less the same pattern, you'd be getting way less of the commons you'd normally get. Um, you'd get maybe things similar to the C3OP packs where it's a different type of alt art or a different foil or whatever than you would normally get in the normal packs. But it is still ultimately like the same cards from the same set they're yeah yeah or whatever you're not getting completely different but you're saying um one of these boosters could possibly oh this one comes with three rares yeah yeah um generally speaking i think a collector's booster comes with uh it's i think somewhere between two to four rares um that i mean and and again this is a thing that they that they've changed frequently um sure you know for a while there from especially from like set to set they were sort of adjusting the formula uh for how they laid out these collectors boosters and stuff but yeah i think uh and i I I've dropped out of the game in favor for unlimited. So I haven't bought any magic in quite a while. So, (laughs) Uh, but yeah, I believe that the collector's boosters. Yeah. It's like two to two to four rares or five rares. I mean, Um, it sounds more more expensive though, right? Yes. A collector's booster. um, Magic is, is going to generally be between 20 and $30. For a single booster. Of... For a single booster, yeah. And you're going to be, if you buy the box of 12 boosters, uh, between like 200 and 250. Now, I mean, the comments. fact that you said they come with less commons and the commons you get tend to be some kind of special treatment does still make that far more appealing to buy in bulk because I think Kurt and I might be on the same page. One of the biggest downsides to this type of game is feeling like you've wasted a lot of money on a bunch of useless cards because like you know you there's so many extra commons lying around that i don't have use for and if this mitigates that that maybe is worth the uh premium on that yeah a little bit i don't know that i would only buy these instead of ones or something obviously but i could see buying some depending on the specific price point and the specific number of cards in the pack, stuff like that, hypothetically, the... it could still be like way too expensive. Yeah. But if it's not terrible, and, and so far I feel like Fantasy Flight has treated us pretty well, is my impression, based on like the prices and like the rarities and stuff, it's they're probably going to be more fair about it than the Magic yeah. ones, I so, want to assume. I will say, given how standard boosters are set up... Um, you know, where you already have a chance for any card of any rarity to upgrade to hyper space. You also have well, a guaranteed foil in every pack with also the chance of that foil being hyperspace. Um, so you've kind of already got uh, sort of like a watered down version of sort of the, the all the chase cards that you would get in like these... Um, uh, collector's boosters not quite like they were maybe closer to for a while their magic I also had these things called set boosters which were sort of like this weird middle ground between like a standard booster pack and a collector's booster um, which is kind of where the the unlimited boosters feel to me um, hmm. 
But I think one thing is, is uh, I think these could be really cool um, for a couple reasons. I mean, one, I think it's going to help draw more people who are interested in the collecting aspect of things into the game. Um, it's also going to create this outlet where people more interested in that collecting and like secondary market kind of things, they can go to that and people who just want to play can, <laughs> you know, go into the, uh, uh, just the standard boosters and stuff. Um, I think, one thing I, I hope they do not do, um, and I, I got to think they would, they're not going to do this because I think there'd be a, a riot if they did, is not downgrade standard boosters, though. You know, like sure. the way we have them right. right now, keep that how it is, you know. Oh, don't yeah, don't do something yeah. like move all hyperfoils into collector boosters. If they did something like right. that, I'd... That would be that, rough. that would be rough. That would be rough. Um, so, do, how you said this might like okay? I'll like the big whales might s- swim over to this product instead of the standard ones. But as much as I personally dislike the whole aftermarket thing, is this sort of thing good? for that is it irrelevant to that like are prices of singles going to be different once these are out versus now i mean really it's going to partially depend on how big of print runs they do with these and things like that because um like with the like with the magic stuff, a lot of times it's you, they'll they do a much smaller print run of the collectors uh, boxes versus the standard ones, and so like after a while, you won't see the collectors boxes in stores anymore. Okay, um, that that makes sense. So so I mean, part of it's going to depend on what kind of print run they do there, obviously. Um, so if they're flooding the market with it. Um, and it's it's really hard to say without knowing like what the distribution of cards in those packs is like. I also, um, and and like w- and until we get more information, you know, about like that and about like what kind of alternate treatments are we going to get? New kinds would, of foiling treatments. I would be we- very surprised if this carbonite edition did not include variants that look like those con exclusives yeah that's that that's sort of like what a lot of people have been speculating uh those are like sort of black and white right yeah that the the gen con uh yeah con exclusives were sort of like a trial run for the carbonite treatment to cards Um, yeah and i wonder if so this says um, as far as I can tell on the packaging that we can see, it doesn't call them collector boost or anything. All it says is carbonite edition. So I wonder if, you know, real wild speculation here, that makes it sound like, okay, either they're giving it a cutesy Star Wars name or we might see like Kyber edition in the future or, you know, like a chromium edition. Another Maybe, but Wars at the same movie. time, I sort of feel like this, this, uh, carbonite edition is just sort of like their their way of saying collector's boosters because i don't know maybe collector yeah. booster is something that watsi is trademarked it's possible <laughs> yeah wouldn't surprise me um, well, and even I mean, if hopefully... that maybe they're just looking for something that's more trademarkable or star warsy you know yeah, yeah. um Hopefully we'll we'll get more details. Usually they're pretty good about posting an article about some of this stuff pretty quick. So we might just get all the info soon, hopefully. Yeah. I think I don't know. As far as this annou- this whole announcement goes, I'm sort of on the fence about it until we get more details. Yeah. Um what's your ideal uh every what what information would come out that would make you the 
fall on the, the side of the fence where these things are. Uh, I mean, I guess, like I said, number one, there's got to be no change to the standard boosters right now. Um, and I think uh, price point, I would like to see, you know, MSRP not really be higher than 20 bucks, maybe 25. Um, and then, uh, I guess also the other, the last thing for me is, um, and I, I had another point in my head and then it just went. <laughs> something about the contents, maybe the right mix of rarities or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think they also, yeah, I think they got to be, uh, worthwhile basically right? yeah it basically they they need it's it's sort of a weird mix where they need to make it worthwhile but they but they also got to make sure that they don't put stuff in there that's so good it like completely devalues everything in standard booster boxes sure yeah you yeah know what i'm saying yeah um, I, my one little hope is that if we get alt art treatments, they are like commissioned as alt arts because the way all of the alt arts have happened in this game so far is they've used a different artist submission. So, you know, they've got like five people yeah. submitting for one prompt and then they pick one. And then for these alt arts, they go, well, let's use this other person's, which is cool, but also leads the alt arts to feel very samey to the yeah. standard version, yeah. which yeah. Part, part of the appeal of the alt art, it tends to be like, it's fancy and different. And um, like, yeah, like, like a showcase is tend to feel very different from the. Uh, standard yeah. But at one. the same time, I mean, even with those showcases, they're still given the same art brief. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they just kind of, Seem feel like they stand out more. Maybe the, yeah. the leaders had a bit more wiggle room than the uh, other cards. But um, you know what I'm saying? It would be nice to get like genuine, like original alt art. Uh -huh. if that makes sense. The 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 one thing is is that it there is always a little bit of trepidation about this with me here, just because I feel like. <clears throat> Not that Watsy wasn't like a greedy company before Collectors Boosters came along. How long is this been a thing? Um. Oh, geez. When did they first do Collectors Boosters? It's uh. God, it's got to be at this point. At least six or seven years, maybe. Maybe not quite that long. So semi recent in the grand scheme of things, but not really recent. Recent. Yeah, let's see. It was okay. Ravnica Allegiance was when they first announced introduced collectors boosters, and that was in 2019. Okay, yeah, so five years. Five. Okay, but you're thinking that starting with the collectors boosters, there was sort of a trend of them kind of. Uh, yeah, I feel like than usual. they sort of, I don't know, it just so, it has felt like, yeah, they, they've been put, uh, the amount of product they've been putting out and the amount of like premium FOMO-y type stuff has, has just really increased exponentially. Mm -hmm. And, um... Some people like that. Myself, I feel like some of that, a little bit, can be nice. I will, I like with these collectors, even when I when I played Magic, I often would buy like a box of uh, collectors, boosters, um, just because there was cool stuff in them. It was fun to open these packs full of, that's another thing. Cracking these collector's packs is really fun, I will say. Um, so, so like confetti that... Uh-huh, yep, yep. Uh, 
everyone has uh, one of those speakers like from the fancy birthday cards and it plays like Star Wars music. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're so expensive. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like uh, it it can be fun. It can be nice, but they can uh, go too far with it. And I think... It's kind uh, of a fine line. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's 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 just my one worry is to see this happening so I, early in the game's you, life. But my my instinct tells me that Fantasy Flight is going to play it on the side of keeping us happy and playing it safe. And, I, I like, hope that's so. The, and the whole model of this game is we can't screw this up. Has been like the motto from the get go behind the scenes, and they're so far everything has been pretty smooth. And I feel like they haven't like it hasn't been so. I'm sure they've been planning this for. I'd be surprised if this was something they they thought of like a month ago and like, oh, what if we did this? They probably had this in the works since before the game came out. Well, yeah, I mean, like like they said. Um... I mean, essentially, they have to finalize stuff for 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 printing about a year ahead of time. So, um, yeah. So and and jump to light. Jump to we're going to be seeing jump to light speed in March here, um, Ooh, which is birthday, which is way less than a year from now. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, my my, I I would assume that they've leaned on the side of let's try not appear to be worse than other alternative games out there. Yeah, I'm cautiously cautiously optimistic, but you know, like I said, I based on past magic experience, I'm going to be wary. I but you know, at the end of the day, I hope. I hope it, I definitely, I hope it ends up being a good thing. Like I said, I hope it's going to be, you know, just having a cool premium thing like that is something that will be a draw for a certain type of person. So, um, I mean, it's going to be hard for me to not get a lot of those because <laughs> it's, it's it, cool it already style, sounds very you know. appealing to me. I like the, when the cards look cool, I'm, more of a I want cool Star Wars things more than I want like yeah. uh, I don't know. I mean, as I long as the game, I, but unless the like whole thing bags. is full of like foggy OP style bordered cards, you know, <laughs> that, then they'll just sit and collect us. So, <clears throat> I'm I'm also curious. The other the last thing I'm curious about will be if these. Will contain showcases, or if showcases will remain exclusively in the standard, hmm. or if they have different showcases, uh, or if uh, like oh, the, you're more likely to get a showcase out of a collector. I don't know if they will make it more likely to for you to get a showcase. I would be really surprised if showcases aren't in these uh, uh, booster packs. So. In fact, I would also I wouldn't be surprised for us to also see a new I wouldn't be uh possibly foil and hyperfoil leaders, which we currently do not have in standard packs. I bet right. I would, that would be something mm. I bet we would see in these. Nice. Um same yeah, with I... some of the same with some of the bases, foil and hyperfoil uh bases. Yeah, I wonder if they would stick with the same format where every pack has a leader and a base, or if they would throw that out for something like this. You they, know, you know, I I thought about that um, because in some ways it does kind of feel be, feel like, ah, oh, man, I'm buying these premium packs and I've got two slots that are essentially wasted by a leader and a yeah. base. Um, yeah. But even like the Magic Collectors boosters, Magic Collectors boosters still have uh, like a land. And a token card in those. I mean, um, as long as they're, they're but, but they but they are yes, like they're yeah. <clears throat> they're special like foiled tokens and special um, alternate art lands and things like that that you can't get in yeah. standard packs. So, so that, that could be really cool. Maybe. Yeah, it it, it feels less bad <laughs> with like with some set with like lands because 
you need a whole bunch of lands for one deck in Magic, where it's like you re- you only need one base for. Yeah. Uh, but those bases, um, I feel like now that we've got token units, the token on the back side of the base, getting that will feel less oh, like yeah. uh, whatever. Then, you know, like a shield and an experience token. So many people don't use those anyways, but like the unit tokens, people will use those cards for. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a, uh, here's a pitch for fantasy flight. It's going to be so good. They might call me right after they watch this alternate bases that have, so the HP you start with the 30, and then you've got an alt one that has every denomination under 30. <laughs> so every time you take damage, you don't have to use tokens. You swap the card. You have out. a base deck. You just take yes. yeah, you just, off the... You flip the top card away. <laughs> and also, the art changes, so whatever scene is there... It gets more it gets damage. more and more damage. Yeah. <laughs> and once you, you know, discard the last card, there's just a card that's got, like, an explosion and some rubble, and that's it. Oh, man. That would be cool. Someday, someday we'll we'll make some of those as a special prize for patrons. So uh, yeah, sign up for our Patreon and one day, one day <laughs> you might see that as a gift. <laughs> I guess my other question about these collector boosters: Do we think there's any chance they would go back and start releasing these for? earlier sets from before set four is that pretty much probably not going to happen i would say we would be more likely to see reprints of like they might maybe make like one slot or one you know one slot in the booster pack be a a re like a, a reprint of some old card from from hear this first wave of sets mm. so this set rather four, than them going back and doing a whole right so i buy of, a set four collector and one of those cards is gonna be a set one two or three yeah possibly or or maybe or it's like or it has a chance of being from that or something i i think that would be more likely than us seeing them do a whole I have an addition to my pitch. Okay. So the patrons will be getting Echo Base. And on the art, there'll be an ATAT that slowly moves across the card <laughs> and blows up the shield generator. You could, you know, flip book these cards to see a little scene. Joe likes anyway. to make work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Only. 30 distinct pieces of <laughs> um okay well that is uh the collector boosters aka the carbonite edition um which was the most fascinating thing they announced other than the jar jar card but we're not here to talk about that we just wanted to uh, get educated on what the heck a carbonite edition is and i think we have accomplished that. Thank you, Leo. Thank, thanks, Kurt, for learning. <laughs> and Good thank job, you Kurt. all for watching and learning along with us. Um, unless anybody has any other insights, speculations, or things like that, or uh, art pitches, um, I think we're going to call it a night.